Good morning and welcome to Searching Through Scripture. I'm Father Terry here at St. David's Anglican Church in Welland, Ontario, and I'm thrilled that you could be with us once again as we read various scriptural passages and then talk about the ways in which they apply to our lives. Uh, today, this week's lectionary, which is appointed in the Anglican Church, and the Church Universal is that which is tied to the baptizing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what you'll find in these series of readings uh, that we have presented to us uh, for this coming Sunday is a real focus on the work of the Spirit and how the Holy Spirit descends upon us and changes us forever. In uh, Mark's Gospel, uh, the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, we have this wonderful story of John, John the Baptist. And uh, in it, John the Baptist is described uh, in a variety of very colorful ways. And many times preachers like to focus on that. What I want to focus on today as we look at this particular reading, again, chapter 1, 4, verses 4 to 11, is the role of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and what is it that the Spirit not only does here in the identifying of Jesus, but what the Spirit does when it descends upon us. So, let's begin. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now to understand the work of the Spirit, I believe, is to understand the work of the Trinity. Because I don't think it's uh, possible for us to talk about the Holy Spirit without considering the way in which it is related to God and to Jesus. You see, all three are one, just like the Holy Trinity. Each one of them is of the same substance, meaning that within all three of those uh, parties, we'll call them parties, things, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, uh, within all of those, we have the same essence, the same substance. And so one of the things I'm going to be talking about this week in my sermon, uh, as we do our spiritual communion, is the image of uh, the breath of God. I'm going to talk about uh, one of the hymns which was written in 1878 um, in which we ask God to breathe on us, right? It's called the breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Why do we say that? We say that because we want to share in the very substance and nature and joy and love of God. And by doing so, we then take part uh, in life with God and we are filled with love and joy because at his very essence, God is love and joy. Now, how do we participate in the Holy Spirit? What are the ways in which we can actually reach out and fully uh, participate in the gifts of God uh, given to us through the Holy Spirit? Well, that's a question I actually want to put to you today as we consider the reading. What are the ways in which you in your life have experienced the Holy Spirit? 
first of all, do you believe that you've experienced the Holy Spirit? And secondly, if you have, how has that happened? And thirdly, what does that leave you with once you have experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life? You know, uh, I once heard a preacher say that to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be filled with incredible joy because once you experience it, your life is changed forever. And so, uh, you know, what we have here in the reading of Mark is um, the descending of the Spirit on Jesus for all to see so that in God and in Jesus Christ, we also have the working of the Spirit and the things that Jesus uh, shows us through his life and ministries are the same ways in which we are asked to express that Holy Spirit in our actions. Um, if you have an opportunity, grab the common lectionary for this Sunday uh, coming, the one that's appointed for the baptism of the Lord, and look up the readings of the day. So uh, the gospel reading for the day again is Mark 1, 4 to 11. The uh, New Testament reading uh, is from the book of Acts, uh, chapter 19, 1 through 7. And uh, the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible reading is Genesis uh, chapter 1, 1 to 5. And you'll see how these three things are linked so closely together. We have the creating of heaven and earth by the source of all love, the Father. We have uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, which is found in Christ at the time of his baptism. And in fact, God identifies Jesus as the Son of God. And then in the book of Acts, we, we have the baptizing of uh, many disciples and, uh, and how they are identified as, being, uh, as having Jesus Christ and the Lord and God within them through the Spirit. So again, I just want to say to you, as you consider these readings this week, think about the ways in which the Spirit has acted or is acting in your life. I love to hear your comments on our Facebook page uh, because I think it's really important that we share those, uh, those moments uh, in our lives with others because by sharing we are then allowing others to see forth uh, the love of God and the work of Christ in our lives. Uh, I can just say without uh, pointing to a specific uh, situation or occurrence in my life, but I can tell you that I've met numerous people uh, who I believe to be filled with the Spirit. And when you meet them, you can see how the, the love of God radiates through them, that they have been changed uh, in ways that is unimaginable. Uh, and in fact, uh, one could even say changed by the divine presence now in their lives, which they've experienced through the gifts of God. So be safe, stay well. Uh, please comment on our Facebook page. I would love to hear what you have to say. And uh, as I say each and every week, uh, may you always know how deeply loved you are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.